Hi everybody, it's Bill here. Hey, I bought a brand new King Cutter 72 inch box blade. If you'd like to take it out with me and get some dirt on it, join me right now, today in Iowa. Well, hi everybody, it's Bill again. This is the King Cutter 72 inch box blade. And I got this uh, at a local farm implement store here. I believe uh, Blaine's Farm and Fleet. It was there and it was uh, priced right. And I was able to pick it up and bring it right home. There you can see I'm pointing out that uh, they use square tubing instead of um, an angle iron or flat steel. I like their welding. Look at the stitch welding in here and then reinforcement behind the uh, shanks. It's iMatch compatible, very easy to hook up for me. Taking a quick walk around here, you'll notice they've put four holes in the shanks for adjustment. There's six shanks across there, and they're angled a bit to get into the ground a little bit easier. These shanks have replaceable hardened points, so if you have damage one, you can replace it. Again, I'm pointing out the welding there. Here's the connection point. I've seen other companies uh, not put that reinforcement or, or build that box type design there. So it's very strong. That connection point is very strong. I like that. Here's a close up of the uh, ripper shank there. Very easy to adjust. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to read from the advertisement from this. You know, it says uh, this is, uh, it connects to a category one three point hitch and quick hitch. It says each box blade is constructed uh, with a 20 inch uh, form self cleaning mold board. It's perfect for landscapers, farmers, homeowners, for leveling, backfilling, grading, and a lot of other uh, applications around your land. The, uh, the cutting edges uh, are high carbon steel and are reversible. And each unit contains a heavy-duty ripper shank with replaceable heat-treated teeth. I forgot to point that out. All right, so I'm right next door to video 108. Uh, we put a yard in for my friend there, and he bought this vacant lot next to him. And here's all the spoils uh, from when they excavated his basement. The contractor put it there, and uh, he wants that graded out so we can mow it. Right now it kind of drops off uh, and is unmowable. What I was just showing you there was the, my new power top link. I'm really excited to get it out and show it to you. A friend of mine, Ty, said this thing will change your life, and he was right. And I'm going to demonstrate that several times throughout this. I just love this thing, and I would highly recommend you look into it sometime. So what I'm doing here, I put the pulverizer on, and I wanted to see how effective that would be to pull this dirt out. We got about an inch of rain last night, so it's kind of stubborn there, a little clay in there. And you can see it's just scarifying the ground real good. Uh, using the power top link, I tilted it forward. As you can see, the rollers aren't moving. Try and use that big grade beam in there and pull that soil down into this valley, into those low spots. Well, you're going to see as I go along here a few times, it starts to... Uh, to break that ground up, but it's really not the uh, best solution here. The ground's real even right there. You can see my front wheel uh, spinning and the, the other tire, the rear tire was spinning as I got hung up on that. A lot of clay in this and it is wet, so uh, it's not the best soil to be working with today, but things are gonna improve here pretty quick when we put the box plate on. I think you'll be impressed uh, on how much nicer that is. Throughout this video, I'm going to mention uh, a lot of people that took the time to say hello. From the previous video, I asked uh, my viewers to just say hello and where are they from. And boy, did I have a lot of fun with that. We had a lot of responses to that. Uh, we got responses from uh, Norway, Atwater, California, the Twin Cities, Kansas, West Massachusetts, uh, several places in Canada, Northern Ohio, Nova Scotia, Pioneer, California, West Bend, Wisconsin just to name a few. So you can see the beam starting to pull a little bit of that dirt apart. I've really got it tilted forward so I can take advantage of that and pull that down into that lower spot.
I got hung up here. Look, I put the uh, <laughs> pulverizer down and uh, it was uneven and lifted the back end up and the front wheel spun. And I'm quickly uh, coming to the conclusion that uh, we're going to switch over to the box blade here pretty quick. I apologize for that wind noise. It was such a nice day out, I didn't even take that into consideration. It's been so hot and humid here in Iowa. Uh, we finally had a front move through and uh, woke up this morning to uh, the uh, mid-60s and low humidity. And Gosh, it was a comfortable day out, light breeze, but I forgot to take that in effect with the mic. So it'll get a lot better. Appreciate your patience. All right, we're going to take one more pass here, and then we're going to go out and switch to the box blade. I value your time, and I don't want to waste it. So uh, let's let's get a bigger hammer out here and, and get this job going. You know, I've mentioned it in several of my videos. That iMatch uh, quick attach system is wonderful. And look at that top link. I rolled that around to the point to be level. Drop that hitch off and away I went. We'll back right up to the box blade and connect quickly and away we're going to go. I learned when using that top link, you have to have that plumb to be able to get onto those attachments. But boy, I, I love that eye match system. It's wonderful. All right, now this is going to get serious real quick. I love that top link and I rolled that forward and the scarifiers are all up. But what I learned is you can roll it far enough forward this, that the scarifiers will work. And you'll see that uh, from the top view when we get there. But this uh, box blade weighs, uh, I've got to double check, I think about 500 pounds. So uh, it's a lot nicer than the forefoot that I used to have. Something else I learned, you can actually have it too far forward. Actually, when you level it out a little bit and you're going to see me adjust as we go along here and you allow that rear blade to take a bite and cut you'll quickly fill the box up uh, with soil you know the nice thing about a box blade is it's designed to uh, move uh, soils and materials from one location to another this is very effective on picking up large amounts of dirt and moving them over to those lower areas as I, as I got more comfortable with it, I could lift it slowly, and you're going to see that in a little bit. And then I could deposit that and drop that soil off in lower areas. Now what I'm trying to do here is establish a grade so my buddy can look at it and say, yeah, that, that's what I want. Then I'll duplicate that and work my way across the area. So I want to establish a grade that we can all agree on, and then I'll use that as kind of a mock-up and duplicate that through this grading project. You know, some other cities that uh, took time to uh, check in and say hello was Alberta, Canada, uh, Manitoba, Canada, Lawrenceville, Georgia, and San Diego. All in all, I think I had about 50 cities and people check in from around the world. That was pretty cool. And here's what I'm doing again. Like I said before, I'm going to establish a grade and try to blend it from his existing yard into, uh, take that hump out of there and grade it down to the lower part of his yard. And just considering making it mowable for him and then pulling that dirt into some uh, rough spots in his yard too. I really like that rear blade on the box blade because you can push as you go backwards drop it and then pull forward and and cut also so it's wonderful look at how easy it is to roll that around that's just awesome that just tickles me that is so nice there I just lifted it up a little bit there a little bit more boy that rear blade is taking a bite out of her now isn't it so you can and notice the teeth aren't down I'm just getting this using that back blade and there I pulled it up and I learned to roll it forward just a little bit and then that dumps the soil out where I want it. Just an awesome uh, accessory here. You can't quite tell it, but the elevation change, I'm on top of the hill, it probably drops about between two and three feet. So that's what we have to level out and uh, spread out evenly across the yard so it's mobile.
Now this soil had been there, he said, about two years. So initially I was wondering if I was going to have to use the scarifiers a lot more. But uh, that rear blade, that cutting blade there at the bottom of the box blade is doing a very good job. You'll see as we go along, we kind of get into almost, I'm going to call it a pan of real hard soil, and you'll see how the box blade takes care of that. I kind of got in the side of the bank here and thought, well, I'll whittle away and carve away at the uh, hillside in this direction, but it felt a little bit steep, and uh, so I changed my direction there. So now we're going to pull it from the high end to the low end of this uh, yard. And let's see how that works out. I never did have to lower the shanks. I wish I would have done that and dropped those down a couple notches and demonstrated that. That rear cutting blade works a doggone nice. Uh, it just wasn't needed. The 2038 has such a comfortable feeling the way uh, it sits rides, position of the seat, the height. I like everything about it. And nothing against the two, uh, 1025. That was a terrific first tractor for me. Really like that tractor too. But uh, the 2038 is definitely a step up. Isn't this doing a nice job really getting a hold of the dirt, taking it somewhere else and dropping it off? And then I just do a little fanning action as I back up and kind of spread it out that way. You'll see that as we go through this. Here's a good picture that kind of puts in relation how much dirt we have to move there. That's an honest two and a half, three feet difference there. This took me about an hour and a half today. And of course, we're not going to make the uh, video an hour and a half. We're going to try to show you the high points. And in a few minutes, we're going to jump ahead quite a bit. And uh, we'll keep whittling away at this. But it's just back and forth. Drop it, drag it downhill to the low spot, and repeat. This is actually some of the nicest dirt I've been able to work with. Around my house, it's all rock, clay, and very poor soil, so I really enjoyed this today. Hey, some other shout-outs I want to give out to some uh, friends that checked in from other cities. Wichita, Kansas, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Friendship, Tennessee, Kingsman, Kansas, Eastern Oregon, Southern Mississippi, Galena, Illinois, West Bend, Wisconsin, Tasmania, and Costa Rica. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time. I sure enjoyed it learning where all my viewers were at. It's a small world, isn't it? Well, no, this is pretty nice. Again, demonstrating how effective that back blade is. And I like the weight of the uh, that, that box blade. I can remove soil going forward, drop it off, and push it backwards off that edge and start rounding that down. And you can see sometimes that doesn't uh, dump out, so I just tip it forward. Now you heard kind of a funny noise there as I rotated and changed the pitch of that box. And I think that's where the studs go through the lower lift arms. There's no grease or oil on that, so it kind of makes a chattering noise. You may hear that throughout the video, but that's all it is. And I don't know if that's big a deal where I'll start greasing that or lubing that or not. There it was. Not a deal killer for me. Maybe a little WD-40 or fluid film on it. This lot was originally designed to be a walkout basement or a daylight basement. I don't know what you refer to them in your area. But the front part of the lot towards the street is level and agreed with the street. And then the back area is lower so you can walk out of your basement and you're in your backyard. Uh, look at my friend's house next door, see how he can come out of his basement at a lower level. 
So I'm taking that into consideration here while I find that grade to just slope and blend the two together. I don't want to take too much off the front and not enough off the back. If you don't have time to watch the entire video, please check out the end. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. I had a terrific uh, day at work. My employer bought a new uh, John Deere backhoe, and uh, I got uh, to be the one that got it dirty for the first time. So I'm going to make a video on that, and I've got a real quick preview there at the end. And uh, I think you're going to get a kick out of it, because most of us will never uh, buy a full-size backhoe like that. And I think you're going to be surprised at the similarities between the 1 series and 2 series and uh, that large uh, backhoe. And I'm talking about things like the quick attach and some other features. They're just bigger, but I think you'll enjoy watching that video. Okay, as I pull along here, now notice how I lift it up. Look at the soil falling out of the front of it. I'm going to lift it up a little bit higher, and there goes the remaining amount of soil. So there's a little technique there that comes real quick. But oh boy, you can distribute the soil around there very nice and very even. When I'm done with this project, I think the box blade might have left it in good enough condition to seat it right there. But since I had the pulverizer along, obviously I want to pulverize it. But I thought this uh, box blade does a terrific job today. As I go along here, my, my goal is to make it very mobile for him when he's all said and done. There's a hump right in this area here, and it's stubborn. And uh, it's, it's taking a lot of time here today to get that down and feathered out uh, towards the neighbor's, neighbor's side and then uh, my friend's home. But we're starting to make some progress now. Now we're at the point where I can go forward, drop the blade, and go backwards and just keep shaving it off. Working out very well, I believe. Got it pitched forward there. So I'm letting that back blade do a little work as I'm trying to feather it out towards the grass. All right, so I believe now we're gonna come around here and we're gonna go ahead and get the pulverizer out now and uh, get at it with that. We're starting to wrap this project up. Boy, it was a fun day and really enjoyed doing this. If you'd like more specific information on this pulverizer, check out video 108. It has a lot more detail uh, on this pulverizer. This is a Land Pride pulverizer. And you know, here are the rocks going by those uh, roller pins. But now that I've got it smoothed out uh, as well as I do, I can really move along here pretty quick. And can you see how I was thinking about mobility? Coming across there with a, a riding mower now will be no, no issue for him. I thought the grade change there ended up being very nice. He has some rough ground over there towards his home, and that's why I'm kind of dragging that over that far, trying to fill in some of those rough spots. It's kind of nice you can bear down and drag some dirt along with you if you'd like, or you can have a light touch. You can get as aggressive with this as you like. And you can see here it's really tearing up that uh, hard dirt in there, and this is just a perfect condition now for seeding fertilizer, and hopefully he'll get some rain. Again, I really like how fast you can move back and forth now that we have uh, that rough grade in place and now it's just, just doing the uh, final, final grading, the final touch.
So for this finishing touch, I have everything pretty much level. I've got the two re rear rollers going, but I have it pretty much level. Letting the uh, front grade beam there do a little work when it runs into some uh, high piles of dirt that I intentionally left there because now I want to feather it off into the existing uh, grass. There we go. Just going to feather that out in the existing grass and then, uh, that's going to turn out real nice and be done. Like I say, everything's doing a little bit of work here. The scarifiers, the rear rollers, the grade beam. But look at how nice it feathers out in the existing grass. If he seeds that, that's going to mend together very nicely. And here I'm just doing a little touch-up work again where his existing lawn is. I had a viewer ask me what it would do to a established yard. You can kind of see the, uh, oh, the, where the scarifiers go through. They kind of leave troughs or tear up that yard a little bit. I mean, you would never use this for overseeding the yard, but when you're putting a new into existing, I think it mends together very nice. Feathers it right out so nice. Well, there's what we started off with. An honest three foot elevation change. And here's what we ended up with. So I think that turned out real nice. It's very mobile. Uh, I think it just uh, turned out perfect. So I'm very happy with that. And that was a lot of fun to do today. There's a close up of what the uh, soil pulverized our leaves and an established grass. That'll be easy to see and grow back. Well, there's the equipment used today. And here's the exciting part. Man, a brand new 2020 backhoe. And I got to get the first scoop of dirt with it. So, boy, it was a good day at work today. I don't imagine it gets much better than this. So I'm going to make a quick video on it. I think you'll get a kick out of it because I'll never buy one. And perhaps you won't either. Hey, thanks so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Thanks for saying hello. As always, I appreciate everyone subscribing. Have a great month, everybody. So long.